So our universe is an amazing place. It is full of so many stars and galaxies. It is just incredibly vast. But here on our own little world, something amazing happened. Billions of years ago, cyanobacteria, this humble bacteria, figured out an incredible invention. The cyanobacteria discovered photosynthesis and they were able to harness sunlight to extract energy and in the process create oxygen. Today, oxygen fills our atmosphere to 20% by volume. Without plants and without photosynthetic bacteria, there would be virtually no oxygen in our atmosphere, yet we humans require oxygen to survive. I love to imagine that there are intelligent aliens out there with the kind of telescopes we're trying to build and that they've discovered Earth and studied our atmosphere and found oxygen. And they'll be highly suspicious that there's some kind of life on our planet. Every star is the sun. You know, in our night sky, if you can go to a dark sky, you will see thousands of stars. But our Milky Way galaxy has hundreds of billions of stars. So, you know, there have to be other planets with life out there somewhere. And we're literally just taking the baby steps to, to find those planets and to search for life. So how will we identify gases like oxygen on another planet? Well, to explain that, I'm gonna start with this rainbow. Now you've all seen a rainbow, hopefully, but what you might not know is that if you could view the rainbow really closely, you would see that some colors are missing. In fact, it's a pretty amazing thing. I'm gonna show you this picture of a rainbow now, not created by raindrops, but created by a special instrument inside a telescope called a spectrograph. What I find just completely amazing about this spectrum is that, you know, there are experts here on our planet, scientists, who could tell you what every one of these lines, what every fingerprint pattern means. And what every fingerprint pattern means is it's um, a molecule, it's a gas, it's a molecule or an atom, either in our sun's atmosphere or in our earth's atmosphere. And these experts could literally tell you like exactly which lines correspond to which gases. And that's how we're gonna find signs of life on another world, is look at a planet atmosphere, looking at the light from that planet, and look at so-called spectra, looking for colors missing that are caused by gases in the atmosphere. Now today, now we want to be able to search for some very specific gases. Water vapor, which would indicate uh, liquid water oceans, which are needed for all life as we know it. And we'd like to find some kind of gases that might be attributed to life. We wouldn't know if these gases are produced by intelligent beings such as ourselves. We do breathe out carbon dioxide after all. Or if they're produced by bacteria. Like in your fridge, if something goes really bad and moldy, it smells terrible. Or if you've ever been to a swamp and smelled bad smells there, those are all biosignature gases. Now today, we actually do study exoplanet atmospheres with telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope. And, but today we're only able to study um, giant planet atmospheres, hot planets that are way too hot for life. They have huge, massive like, envelopes of gas that wouldn't let life survive. And we are actually planning and working on our very next generation telescopes including our so-called next generation Hubble Space Telescope called the James Webb Telescope. But I'm not gonna talk about these today. What point I want to make is that no matter what kind of telescopes we're planning on building, our Earth will never uh, be more than a pale blue dot. Let me show you this real picture of our Earth. It's taken from, four, it's taken from the Voyager 1 spacecraft when it was four billion miles away. Our Voyager spacecraft, they actually launched in the late 1970s, and they traveled by all of our giant planets to study them as they flew by, and they're still going. The Voyager spacecraft are now something like 15 billion miles away from our planet. But back to this image, our Earth looks like a pale blue dot as seen from afar. And that red band, by the way, it's actually light scattered in the camera optics. 
But no matter how sophisticated the telescopes that we're thinking of now, we could never be sure that a gas is produced by life. Although oxygen is fairly unique, there are so many other gases produced by life, like methane or hydrogen sulfide, or there's a very long list. Those gases are also produced by volcanoes and other things, and it's going to be a challenge for us to disentangle everything. So the big picture I want to inspire you with is literally how can we go to the stars? It's quite fanciful, and it's still kind of like an out there idea, but we've just started on this huge path, one that your generation, one that the next generations will have to carry to completion. These ideas will take 10 or 20 more years to make real, or longer, <laughs> and each of the ideas would take 20 years or more to get to their destination before they can study the exoplanets up close. The first idea, it's sponsored by Breakthrough Initiatives. It's called Starshot, and it literally is to the stars. The plan is underway to develop technology to send tiny, thousands of tiny spacecraft zooming by the nearest planetary system. These spacecrafts would be called space chips. So instead of spaceship, it's space chip. And these uh, space chips would deploy a solar sail that's a few meters in diameter. That's shown on the bottom right. When they're let go in outer space, what will happen is there'll be a one kilometer square bank of telescopes shooting up lasers that all work together to accelerate these tiny sails. Just like wind pushes a sail on a sailboat, it would actually be the laser light that pushes the sail and accelerates it to a 20th of the speed of light. And just like in nature, how when fish are born or the turtles lay eggs and the baby turtles come out to go to sea, not all of them make it. So in sending thousands of these tiny spaceships, some of them will make the journey without getting destroyed or without failing. Now it will take 20 years for these so tiny spaceship chips with solar sails to zoom by the nearest planetary system. And they'll have the capability to take images and to beam those images back to Earth, which will take another few years. The second concept is even more uh, fascinating. And that is to, this is not quite go to another star, but it's to use our sun, our star, as a magnifying glass. And in that case, we would be able to use our sun as a magnifying glass and see things on another planet like the size of New York City. We could see the glow of a city the si like New York City. We'd be able to magnify an exoplanet by billions of times. Now the kind of bigger picture thinking here is that in order to use that sun as a magnifying glass, just like the magnifying glass has a certain distance where it focuses, in order to use um, our sun we would have to send telescopes out to uh, very, very far away from where we are now. These uh, telescopes would have to go 50 billion miles from our Earth, and they would have to line up with the sun just so. So, what's, so the star with the known planet that we're trying to magnify is literally right behind the sun. So in the field of astronomy and exoplanets, we do love to think big. It can take generation or two to make our dreams happen, but that's why the universe is so inspiring. Our universe is filled with so many stars, so many galaxies. You know, in the bigger picture, when we think of just how small our planet is, that huge universe gives me, and I hope you as well, inspiration. Thank you.